All right, this time I'm gonna throw a nominal. A uh, nominal or a uh, piece that is thrown in one section that has the lid and the bottom thrown together. So what this essentially starts out as is a cylinder uh, that gets real narrow at the top, so narrow that it actually closes. So I'm going to center it, uh, get the extra clay off of there. I'm going to center this piece a little bit high, drill my hole. Open out my floor, and I'm going to open out my floor with a tucked, uh, with my fingers tucked, so that this part stays a little bit thicker. Um, I'll start to pull up the wall, but I'll only really pull from this bottom section, letting up my pressure when I get uh, towards the middle. I want to keep that top section. I want to keep the clay a little bit thicker there. Um, I want to be able to make it a little bit more narrow, and I want to be able to get to the bottom uh, before it gets too tall, too narrow. So I'm going to work on doing some shaping down here. I've compressed my floor with the rib there and now as I move into this section I'm trying to watch this inside wall so that I can bring the clay towards the center. I'll do a couple of pulls and then a collar to make that more compressed and then since this is the last time I'm going to be able to reach this section here on the inside I'm going to get my rib on the outside do as much shaping as I can of the inside wall. If I can reach it, I can get my rib on the inside. Doesn't look like I'm going to reach today. Right, this piece. So then the the clay's really thin and thin as I want it up through till about here. Um, now I can start to do a little bit more collaring. Remember, after a couple of collars, you need to do another pull, or the clay gets uh, starts to get wrinkles that cause problems later on. Use my rib on the outside to take away that extra clay, also to compress it and make it a little bit stronger. I'm going to pull the wall somewhat thinner, but I don't want to get it too thin up here at the top um, because when I collar, I don't want it too thin or it's going to cause rips and unevennesses. So I need to save some thickness to do the collaring, which also makes it a little bit thicker. It's sort of uh, not necessarily what you would expect. Um, when you're when you're thinking about how the, how this works, but the, saving that having a little bit of extra thickness up in this top section when you're coloring it allows those wrinkles, those gathers in the clay, um, to be a little bit more even and regular. <clears throat> you notice there's a little bit of unevenness in height starting to happen, um, and that's just something that we tend to see happen in coloring. Oftentimes with uh, vases that you're coloring or um, even spouts, you end up cutting that away. So I'll do a couple more pulls. You see it's starting to get narrower. It's also starting to get thicker. Now I'm going to use a claw grip where I'm using a, a thumb on the outside and finger on the inside. And I'm going to start to get this more narrow. Now I'm going kind of fast because my camera is about to run out of battery. Um, it doesn't, when you're working on this, particularly as you're starting out, slow yourself down, take your time. Now I'm going to cut off this unevenness here and then continue to collar this up to the center or uh, um, up to uh, up until it closes. Get one more collar in there before it gets too thin, uh, before it gets too narrow, excuse me, um, so that it gets a little bit thinner and isn't just fat up there at the top. And then I'm going to bring my thumbs together, keeping my elbows braced against my legs, keeping myself steady. Now what I've got here is a piece that has closed together on the top. Now I've also, what this is essentially now is a balloon. I've got a ball, a, a pocket of air on the inside. And that means that if I press here and I push that wall in here, it's going to come out somewhere else. Um, and so I can use that to my advantage because I can push on the sides of this a little bit more, um, with a little bit more pressure than I would if I um, had it open at the top. So I can get away with a little bit more as far as shaping. I of course can't get to the inside on this piece until I uh, open it up and I won't open it up until after um, it's leather hard. You can do some shaping. Sometimes people like to do a, a shape, a knob here or, or more of a uh, handle for the lid. 
Um, sometimes people like to keep them more sculptural. I use this form in my own work oftentimes to do sculpture, not the form I'm turning it into now, but the form I started out with, which is basically just a hollow uh, dome form or a, a, a pointy round form, maybe uh, a triangle that's round. Uh, so now you see I've, I've created this dome here, and I could also get in here with different ribs. You see how the edge of the rib there is leaving that spiral pattern. Um, I could make it more clear where I want my, uh, my uh, opening to happen, uh, like that. Important to undercut on this piece as well. You're, it's going to be a harder one to trim. I'll probably trim this off a of chuck, uh, which I'll show you in another video. So I'll trim away some of that, get my eyes down low so I'm seeing what the piece looks like from the side. Um, now as this dries, the clay is going to shrink a little bit and so the piece, the air on the inside will swell it just a little bit. Um, that's something to just be aware of. Um, when you cut into it, it'll, it'll have a little sound that's the, the clay coming out or the air being let out. Uh, but it's also important to keep that in mind if you have any thin areas, if you have a thin floor or a thin section in the middle, for example, um, that swelling, uh, or it's the clay itself shrinks, and so it seems like the air pocket swells, and it'll push out a thin, um, uh, it'll, it'll put up, push out a thin wall and make it a little bit uneven. 